Hi, and welcome again to Jadu Lifestyle Podcast. We want to welcome all our listeners. And I know we've been going through such a, uh, uh, some of us are going through a hard time in this past month with the lockdown and staying at home and not being able to go out. I, I for one, have been a very uh, antsy person. I get, I could stay in my bed, you know, pretty good but after a while I guess I have to get in my car I have to drive I have to go out somewhere so I hope that you've been doing some good things to take care of your mental health as well as your physical body we this month we're going to have a couple of guests three of them actually and most the topic will be what we can do in different areas of our lives to be able to handle something like this. Now we've we've been hearing a lot about, you know, what if this happens again? We need to do some preparation in case it happens again. Uh, basically, we were told that well years ago we were told we weren't going to have a pandemic, and you know we need to be prepared for it. So basically, a lot of minds are thinking. We want to be ready for the next time. But really, do we want a next time? Anyway, last month we talked a lot about journaling and some of the benefits of journaling. And with us being home, some of us, if we didn't have to homeschool and take care of our kids and the other things with the animals and things like that, we had time for ourselves where we could have started to journal or continued with our journaling uh, we started. Um, one of the things that I recognize in this past month of my writing is that I still had unforgiveness for a an ex-boyfriend, a physically abusive ex-boyfriend. And at first, I left him like 30 years ago, 32 years ago, and we've had interactions. In fact, over the years, we've had interactions where I talked, I, you know, whenever I went home to visit my country, if I, I would go see him if I could or not, not for anything physical or to get back, but just, you know, the fact that we were in a relationship, we had a friendship, we had something. So I would do that. But I, what I found in my writing this month is that I grew increasingly, um, my feelings were more hateful towards him. And I know that that word is a strong word, but that's, what I recognize. And so I had to ask myself the question, why have not I not forgiven him? Or why have my feelings gotten worse towards him in the last few years, or maybe in the last year? Is it because I'm cleaning up my psyche a little bit through journaling and, you know, my Physical activities have changed to include more self-care and to include more uh, reflective time, maybe. So I started looking at that. If What is my position or what should be my position? We've read or heard the quotation that it says, forgiveness is not for you. Forgiveness is for the other. I'm sorry. It's not for the other person. It's for you. But here's the thing about forgiveness. When I forgive, do I completely erase it from my mind and pretend or live like nothing happened? And how vulnerable am I going to be to that happening to me again? Or do I forgive but don't forget because I want to protect myself from it happening in the future? So what's the what's the 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 solution to the problem? Should I continue the friendship? Should I end the friendship completely? What should I do? So in my writing this this month, I've asked myself those questions. I still don't think I have a clear answer, but I know 
I don't dwell on it every day and I don't allow his memory to come into my mind to distract me from what I'm doing. I'm doing an honest analytical uh, position on the whole situation for my own healing. I want to know where do I go with this? Where do I go next with this in order to heal my own self, my own body? One, in order to have another relationship with someone that will not bring in the baggage of that old scenario. Um, he claims that he still loves me. And, you know, I'm the only woman he ever loved, but he's had multiple, multiple partners. In fact, he has 10 children with five different women. I'm not one of them. But what I'm saying is that another question that came up in my mind is that has he really changed or is the whole demeanor that he has now is a put on to convince me that, you know, he's okay for me to consider having a relationship with him again. And here's the other part about that. He's actually living with someone that he told he would leave her if I said, okay, I will take him back. Okay, so here's what I want to ask you, my listeners. I want to ask you, are you, have you been in a, a situation like that, an abusive situation? What have you done with it? Uh, where are you now psychologically? Are you, do you still have a relationship with that person? Do you hate that person? Are you still scared about having a relationship? Are you scared about having the same thing happening to you again? Where, where do you think we should go? Uh, me, myself? And our listeners to this podcast, where should we go if we've been in that situation? We would love to hear from you. You can contact us through societybytesradio.com. And you could also contact me on my personal email, which is toddy jadu, T-O-D-D-Y-J-A-D-O-O at gmail.com. I would love to hear what your take on this is. I believe that journaling has healed me psychologically Tremendously. I've become a totally different person in journaling and revealing or uncovering or discovering who I am, what my thoughts were, what drives me, what makes me angry. And interestingly, I would like to, to make a little insertion here. I read um, a little booklet that talked about emotional healing. And one of the things he said is that we could become spiritual, you know, whether we are Christian or in other some other form of spirituality. But if we have unaddressed, unhealed emotions that trigger feelings within us, such as anger, hurt, pain, you know, something negative, no matter how spiritual we become, how close to the higher power that we believe in, how close we become, that unhealed emotion will still be there until we recognize it, address it, and take care of the healing of that. That was interesting to me because, you know, I've been a Christian for most of my life, all of my life, pretty much since I was 10 years old, so about 49 years, and 47 years, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, I believe that, you know, when I gave my life to Christ, that I was forgiven, and I was healed. And so when I read that book recently, maybe few months ago, it now brought back some very important things. First of all, did I have unhealed emotions from before I accepted Christ in my life? Or also, what are some of my reactions, behaviors now that are triggered by possibly that unhealed emotion. For instance, 
let's say something happened and I got angry. You know, it could have been somebody's behavior. I can give you an example. I do not like set an appointment with someone and then they show up late. That upsets me. And it upsets me because I feel it's disrespectful for the person sitting and waiting for somebody else who's late. And it's a uh, blatant disregard for their time. By the way, my my technically love language is time. I love spending time with people and people spending time with me. That's my That makes me happy. They don't have to give me a gift or anything. They just, the time is a gift. So that triggers in me. If the person comes in late, that triggers in me a reaction of, anger. Um, so now I had to I have to look at where did that unhealed emotion come from? I think that in my growing up years, I have felt that I was disappointed. I had expectations. I had anticipations. And a lot of times it did not happen. It did not come true. So my being disappointed caused these emotions to build up in me that when I expect and anticipate and it doesn't happen, I react. I have anger. I have feelings. I have emotions. So in analyzing that, I realized that I actually set appointments and I'm early for my appointments because I don't want to be disappointed. Or maybe I don't want the other person to be disappointed. I respect their time and what they're trying to, or what they're giving me. And I appreciate that they're doing it, so I show up on time. So now I have to go back into my psyche and see where I got my emotions from. And I'll tell you this, every one of us must go back into our past our childhood, not that we are living in it and not that we are bringing it up and not that it's hindering us, but we will find all the triggers to our emotions, our happiness, our sadness, our disappointments, our lack of expectation, our expectation, our lack of motivation, our lack of everything. We will find it in our past, in our childhood. And, you know, Louis A. He had an illustration in one of her books that stayed with me from the time I read it to now because it really made an imprint on my heart. And she said, picture that little child that you were and all the feelings that that child had and was going through all the drama and whatever, and then put your arms around that child and tell that child that you will never leave that child, that you will be dear for her, and that you will love her or him, and comfort the child. And that image stayed in my head, and it has truly helped me to heal, to heal my inner child. The inner child is very, very important. When we are children, we actually look up to the authority or the people that we think are authority figures. So we may latch on to somebody, whether it's our parent or not, we we will develop uh, likes and dislikes for certain traits they have. And we decide we want to become like that. We want to do a lot, uh, you know, like they do. And a lot of times we find children follow the footsteps of their parents in careers and things like that because they they admire their parents for becoming and doing what they did and they say, okay, well, I want to be just like that. On the other hand, we have people who have gone away from where their parents, uh, the path that they took and and formed their own path because they had different interests. They had different likes, different, different, different dislikes. Now, there's also outside people that become people we admire and we pattern our lives after them. So the authority figures that we we pick up in our childhood is what forms our belief system and our 
or the things we feel strongly about and things.